All right, so I'm not going to put this video on Ticker TV, so I'll try to record as long as I can and we'll kind of walk through this. I don't get a chance to record a lot because uh, futures trading is really tough to kind of record and narrate, but I'll talk about this. So, you know, first target on this is 122.82. We pretty much got to this here, um, and this thing is kind of getting a resistance here. All right, so this will be the first level I'm looking at. So, again, you know, a lot of people that trade support resistance, it's a really simple idea um it's just i think a lot of people misunderstand it or they're just taught incorrectly and that's just again my opinion that comes from really bad educators or people just don't know what they're doing uh attempting to show others you know this is how you do it so what i'll talk about with this is so as you get to resistance or supports right again not every level is going to trade exactly to the tick if you have a resistance or a support level you know what i look for personally is you know as long as I'm close to it. like a stock like Netflix, it's, you know, it's 80 cents away. That's good enough, right? This thing's already moved. You know, in the last video, I, I sold these at 280. So I sold three of them. I could add additional $300 in that trade. You know, I'm still plus two with runner contracts because, you know, because of this move. So I'm glad I held some because you can see that basically these things are just getting swept on this trade. And again, part of this is like, you know, when you look at P&L, so a lot of, you know, traders I've worked with, if you're new to trading, when you start to look at your P&L, it's really tough sometimes to, you know, let your emotions kind of come through and say, you know, look, like, it's really tough to kind of just look at this and say, I want to cover, I want to cover, and kind of decide that you want to cover. But you, if you have price targets, you're not trading your P&L. I can't stress that enough. You really want to trade the chart and the chart's saying higher. So, you know, you look at this and then you don't look at the PL. So, there we go, 182. And that's pretty good. So, we got to that level. I mean, that's a pretty quick 60 cent rejection. And again, you don't want to panic. Like, I don't panic when it gets to a level like this. Like, I know I'm going to get resistance here. So, you know, ahead of time when we plan this trade, so if you're looking at this and you're saying, you know, I got in here, why the 120 calls? Right, they're so out of the money. How can you buy something that's six dollars away? Well, when you have a price target up here, you know I want to I want to tier the trade. So I have I have the one sixteens, then I have the one twenties as well. So I was in the money, then some out of the money. So I'm tiering the trade so that each level I get to, you know, I can potentially make more and more. And that's the same with anything. If you're trading futures, oil, Russell, it doesn't matter. These are 122. Yeah, and you can these will these will probably. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this trade 128 today. But you can see we got to uh, that level there. So let me go take a look. So you know, as you get to levels, you can switch your time frames because the smaller time frame gives you more detail to see, you know, who's selling this, right? You can judge this. So a lot of people say like, you know, you need indicators. You don't need indicators to trade with. Um, it's just not necessary. What you're judging is the price. This is price action, right? As you get to a level, who's selling this? Right. So that's what I'm looking at here. I'm just watching to see, you know, what type of seller. How strong is the selling here? I mean, that's pretty good, right? You know, 80 cents or so. But I'm not going to give up, right? You know, I can put stops in these trades, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Goes on this. So up seventeen hundred on the trade there. Actually, what do you want to trade there? And so yeah, so this is that that's your confirmation. This is pretty good selling. So again, I don't want to go short this and say, look, I want to reverse the position, right? Because when you look at like a daily, right, it's important to see the. Uh, the forest through the trees, so to speak. When you look at it daily, you, you really don't want to, you, you don't want to short this, right? You want to be in this move. So you're, you're kind of watching this to see, you know, where that level is. So let's take a look at this five and move again and see where this is at. So it's starting to form a doji. So this could be a short term top, but again, I'm not really too worried about it. I'm in at 60 cents or 50 cents a contract rather. So again, you know, this is probably going to hold, this is a support level here. So on the way back down, 
this probably comes and tests you know 120 so if we hold this I'm okay if that doesn't hold I'll look for the hold of this here right and so again you know if you were shaking out this morning I wasn't really shaking out of this or we got to a level hold back held the level continue to run so. and again that is healthy selling obviously the 390 of the trade and this is how quick uh, with these options when you're trading options like Netflix right the way the stock trades is, I mean, literally these options move 70 cents in a matter of, I don't know, a minute and a half. So if you're trading a 30 lot on these, right, that's a quick 2100 that just disappeared. Right, again, that's why it's important to my opinion, like, and that's why on this particular strategy, the remora strategy, I took basically 75% of the position off. Right, was it early 280? Not really, right, I mean, it's still profitable, it's 400%. It's a lot of money in there. So kind of watch this. So that got Rex that level rejected. Rejected. So I can watch this here. Yes. Nice. So this one. And again, normally, like when you get to a level like this, like, you know, I could have covered these here, but I already secured profits. I'm going to try and press this, right? And I'll talk about this, you know, most of the time, $1,800 is a lot of money in just a few hours. Um, I'll talk about this because I get a lot of questions. You don't want to get greedy, right? So if you have a really good trade like this, and you're, let's say you're building a small trading account, you don't want to, to keep pressing. A lot of traders, what happens is, and I see this from working with traders over the years, and start trading options, they do really well, and they try to change the size. So when you change your risk, you change the model, right? So let's say like, you know, this is only a $400 trade. If I go to the next trade for 4,000, right, and you miss, you've got all that work to make of that capital. So it's really tough. You want to keep the same type of risk per trade and keep a model in place. Because you, you, you're you not going to win every trade, right? It's just not how this game works. So these are off $100 that quickly. Again, the only reason I'm pressing is because I took profits on some. I've had a really good two days. And so based on my trading in two days, I can afford to kind of try and press this particular higher. And obviously that other option too is, you know, you let this, you could, I could have sold these here at 390, let this pull back and then rebuy into the trade. Right, I just I'm not a believer of that. I don't like to day trade options too much. You know, I'm a believer just like we trade futures. If I'm buying here, my entire trade is structured at this level. And I'm just selling it out as it goes on. Right? It keeps your, your nerves in check and you don't have to rebuy and worry about paying too much. You just put one trade on and you, you ride the trend. So let's take a look. There might be a little A B C D on this. There's not. So again, I'll probably put a stop in. I won't let this get below 118. You know, again, if we get above this 12282, this will trade 126. So an easy way to go and see like how many deltas am I carrying on this right now? So 55, so that goes. So these could probably trade to like five or six hundred dollars, maybe seven hundred dollars, depending. Right, so I know that already based on a few things, so that's what I'm kind of holding that on. And again, you can see how quickly this pulled back up. Right? So. So let's take a look at the 60 minutes, see what this is doing. And again, that's expected. I mean, even if you're not trading with support resistance, right, on moves like this, you know, you 
God is starting to take some profit. I'm just not again. I'm not too stressed on it. Not too stressed on it. And I should probably put stops in, but I'll. I'll wait. If you're, you know, if you're new to trading options, like you want to walk away, you just put, you just basically go to the right side and do a stop sign on this. But I'm gonna kind of watch this to see what's going on. Just seeing what's going on. Just seeing what's going on. And again, that's how quickly you know you've seen this. I mean, these are down basically dollar fifty in about four minutes. So. Spreads widening, so let's see here. Maybe that came right out. I don't want to take that out here. Actually, let me take it like this. So there goes a cut support. So now this support needs a hold, right? So this was a resistance level. So as this was resistance and the way back down, this now becomes a support. So if this thing holds, it you know might be a slow grind and you you get higher. Again, these options don't expire. These weeklies. Don't expire. Today's Tuesday, so Wednesday, so three days I've got on these until these expire. So I'm not too worried about the trade. Again, I've already locked in a decent amount of profits on this trade. I should have probably covered it. covered the 116, but I'll wait this out. So. And again, there's no indicator. It's just price, just support resistance. So if we get above this, we need to get above 120.96. This little doji needs to clear. So decent. Let me look at it. Decent. Let me look another. So, so like here's another stock. So price lines up like 25. This is another stock. You need like another stock with the remore, the methods, the way the high beta. And this is a stock that moves. If you want a stock, the stock's up 25 dollars. And this particular situation, there's earnings this week, so the calls are too expensive, so you can't really trade it. But you know, Netflix didn't have earnings, so you can come out and trade a stock. You know, that doesn't have earnings. They're not pricing in a massive, massive move. And obviously ES is flat. So normally you don't see this, right? So when you're looking at ES, sometimes I watch this. Like this is a flat range in ES. Normally when you get moves like this, the ES is normally up or, you know, one of the indices is up. They kind of they mirror each other, but obviously today we're just chopping it up. You can tell there's a seller there. Like I can just you can just see this can. There's somebody who's just whacking hitting this. And you can see that without even looking at, you know, Level two and all that, and I'll talk about that real quickly. So, um, with level two for trading, you don't need to really. It's too hard to read this. Back in the day, it was really easy to use this because stocks trade in like you know penny increments. Now it's really tough. So you could trade like one twenty one twenty five, one twenty one fifty, and they traded in quarter um, increments. It's a lot easier now. There's so much spoofing in the market that it's pointless. So I saw a video of this educator talking about level two. And he's selling. I mean, it's just it's impossible. It's really hard to read this. It might be possible. I don't want to say it's impossible. It might be possible with penny stocks. I just, I don't really go into that world. That's really tough. But it's hard to see any real size on that. So again, it's just judging, judging when you look at this. Like you could see, like this candle got up there. Somebody was hitting this. You could tell. Like it's not, you know, somebody was, you know, either covering along or they're shorting. We don't know. I don't really care. 
know what they're doing, to be honest. I just could see their son. So sorry about that. We have uh, somebody. Did you hear that noise in the background? Somebody landscaping too. It's a little loud. Hopefully it's not too loud in the recording. I mean, you can see how quickly the PLs pull back. Again, five hundred dollars difference. Again, you know, it's up to everybody's risk. Like you know, you can't come out and say. And that's why one thing I, I talked with traders for is. Like when you're ever looking at a trading course, you're going through a program, like you're not going to trade exactly, like nobody will trade exactly like I do. I mean, you don't have the same risk, right? You can't model, you can't model, you know, somebody who trades with a $300,000 account to your account. So what I'm modeling here, like this risk management is based on, you know, uh, $20,000. This is literally a $20,000 account. So I'm basing the remorse. So we talk about this, you're basing basically you know, two to three percent per trade, which isn't a lot of money, right? And you're only risking, like this trade we talked about at the beginning, it had $450 worth of risk. I mean, what are commissions? Like six dollars, so what is it? Four, six, and fifty, or whatever. So there wasn't a lot of risk on this, and the upside was there. So this is these are the type of trades you want to look for, right? And again, part of that is understanding which stocks to trade. And you can't go out, again, like I said it before, you can't go trade a stock like, I mean, forward. Like, look, look at this range. Like, this stock doesn't move. Right? You can't go buy a call options on a stock that basically trades in a $2 range. Right? I'm sure you can buy leaps that are three years out, but you know, I don't really want to wait three years to make money. I want to make it today and tomorrow and this week. So once we get above this little doji here, you can see we'll get some resistance. So again, that doji is going to be 121 will be resistance. Again, if this breaks 120, 23, 118 is next. So You don't need a lot of these trades, and that's one thing I'll talk about too. Is again, like you know, once you start building a trading account up, like if you're trading a small account, you don't want to go out and think, okay, look, I just made like it's like somebody goes to the casino and makes a lot of money, they just can't walk away and take the money and put it in the bank. You don't want to go out and, and start, okay, now I have money to play with, now I can short this. Let me just buy one contract and short this. You know, like you don't want to do that. You want to stick to like the regimen, whatever model. For your trade plan, however you model that you want to stick with. So with this, you know, so with this, you know, you, I sold some. I sold, you know, seventy-five percent of the position. And that's part of you know, the, the plan on this. And again, if I again, if I know, if I didn't know how Netflix traded, obviously I would have sold it. If I know, I know this stock. I know that if this breaks here, this could run to one twenty-seven. These could probably trade at like six or seven hundred dollars a contract. And that's from just understanding the stock and levels and knowing where to trade. Because normally I would have covered it, right? So. All right, so I'm going to pause the video because it's getting pretty long here, and I'll come back, you know, as it kind of gets to the end of the final point of this. All right, what's going on, guys? So I'm going to bring this back. Uh, so I'll talk about this real quick. So these options, again, are trying to make new highs. They just traded 350. So I'll pull this up. So that support that I talked about, so this thing just pulls back. I mean, again, it's just support, resistance, support, resistance. So 
We held 120 on this. It's popped to 122. The next level, right, that needs to clear is 123. So, you know, 123 clears it probably sees 124.75, um, 127. So, again, I'm still in this trade. I'm not going to cover these. You know, I have two left. I'm not going to cover it. I'm just kind of hanging out. It's midday. Uh, you know, we just got a really good trend. So, again, looking at the 60-minute chart, I just want to kind of see what's going on with this. Like, that's not the best candle. This candle should open and ripped. But, you know, you look at relative strength. They're a little bit overbought. Um, you can't really expect the momentum to continue. Um, but with a stock like Netflix, and again, this is really true for a stock like this. Recently, you know, a lot of the relative strength stuff just doesn't really apply. So you've got to rely on your level. So again, you know, we held support. We pulled back. We're kind of just trading between this. Trade. I think we're half of this range. So this is a range, right? You consider this a range. I think we traded 50% of that. Yeah, pretty much. And again, when you're in this trade, there's not really much you can do. So like, you know, if you're watching ticks, if you're new to options trading, you're trading, there's not really much you're gonna you're going to do rather that watching this is going to do anything. So I'll freeze this in a second. You just, you, you've got to put stops in. It's like, you see how the, the bid ask here is really tight. That means that there's a move coming. So when the bid ask spreads open, or when you have like a 60 cent spread, there's just, right, it's really tough to make the trade. You have to, you have to get between the bid and the, and the, uh, and the offer rather. So, I'm sorry, bid ask on this. So you, you need to get between, right now there's no spread. Right, so earlier when I was making that trade out at 280, I had to go between the spread and throw them in between. So right now, you know somebody's really picking these up, and you can just tell. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to. Again, if you're focused on like watching the time and sell, you just don't need to. It's just unnecessary. Right, it's like busy work. It makes you feel like you're doing something as a trader. You just don't need to. Like there's no course you need to take on this to realize like you know this is going higher. The trend is really straightforward. Right, the thing is. Going higher, you want to stay long against your levels. You know this is resistance. I mean, that was already established. So at this point, you either accept the risk or you don't. So the risk is this trades 120 again, these trade back at 240, or this trades 118, these probably come back to buck 50. Right. So you put your stop. So you literally set it, set it, and forget it. You leave it alone, and that's it. Right. So again, I'm trying to trade this here, so I know the risk. I took some money off of the table, and that's it. So you're just kind of waiting let this trade play out. But, yeah, I wanted to bring it back. I'll probably wrap the video here. I might do a trade recap at part two of this video. Um, but I don't want to make this like a 30-minute video. It's already at 22. So that's, you know, if you have questions, head over to the site. So this methodology to recap this, uh, we call this pretty straightforward. We call it the Remora methods. So I designed this based on uh, small accounts. So just real quick breakdown. A lot of new traders want to learn to trade small accounts, right? So they either go trade penny stocks or, you know, Forex or micro lots, right? Options trading is a really good way to do this. We just call it Remora because you're following institutional order flow. You're trading institutional size stocks, right? So this takes away having to scan for stocks. You don't have to go and scan every morning. You don't have to have a watch list. You literally keep in this program, right, this methodology, 20 stocks. That's it. So you, you have less homework. You only follow 20 names. You get to know those names really, really well. And you just trade them over and over and over and over, and that's it. So, again, the second thing with this is the risk. On this trade, I think I risk, and I'll go through it real quickly to recap it. So I bought the 120s for 48 cents, and they're trading at 320 now. Right, so I bought four of them. So it was 250. And then I bought the 116 call, one of those for 180. So essentially, I have to do the math. What's that? Four times five is two fifty, plus one eighty is three. What's that? Sorry, long day. So four thirty. I'm sorry, is the risk on this? So that was the risk. You can call it R. A lot of people have to use that. So the risk was four thirty again. So with the Remora methodology, the way it's modeled is every trade is less than five hundred. You should never have to pay for options more than five hundred dollars. Right, so let's say this trade didn't work. Right, let's say that this didn't go our way. Well, the stop on this trade is placed at 50%. Right, so the max loss on this would have been 250. 
on this trade. You know, could it, obviously this could have gapped down. You could have lost all your premium for this. So let's say I paid 500 and gapped down. You know, my stop didn't get triggered the next morning. I would lose 500. So if you're trading with, let's say, like a, let's just say $5,000 account, you'd have to miss 10 trades in a row to blow the trading account. Right? That's really bad luck. You know, just could it happen? Yeah, just very rare. So again, you're only risking five hundred dollars a trade, no more, no less. Right? It's only possible because of the way weekly options and options in general trade. Right? And again, this last point I'll make is you're trading the chart, you're not trading. So a lot of people look at the the Greeks. People get confused by this, right? The only thing I really look at is implied volatility. And deltas, and they're really easy to understand, right? It's just the rest of the stuff you really don't need, right? We're not trading time, we're directional trading, so you don't really need that type of stuff. So, again, that's Netflix, that's the wrap on this. Uh, risk was 450, 430. Uh, I think I was up to about 1900, 2000 on the trade at one point, uh, up about 1400. I'll keep the runners, I sold 75%, so I'll keep plus two there, then one. Uh, 116 call on this and then we're looking for a higher move to 127 and 130 on this so that's it hope you enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe to our youtube head over to the website the remore options course is there we have a lot more videos and that's it but best of luck trading